While the latest vaccine progress news out of Pfizer was welcomed by the market, lockdowns are coming and it will be more strict. Even stricter lockdowns are coming, and they are going to be extremely devastating for the U.S. economy. Biden advisor calls for harsh four to six week lockdown, says it will revive the economy. The lockdowns were never about medicine. They were seized upon by autocratic politicians and oligarchs for population control and to destroy the economy and civil rights. A major and spoken reason for lockdowns is not to reduce the cases curve or anything else because that can easily be reduced by reducing the PCR amplification cycles used to analyze swab samples. Just turn the knob down to 30 or less and magically the positive cases reported as infections by MSM take a nosedive. It's as simple as that. The real reason is to raise the fear level and frustration being suffered by the population to the point that when a vaccine becomes available, and we tolerate the propaganda pouring out of every orifice of government and mainstream media, the sheeple will be lining up to take it, just to end the lockdown's nightmare. We are experiencing fear management with intent. Are you ready for another nightmare? Earlier this year, the lockdowns that were instituted all over the nation resulted in the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression of the 1930s and forced more than 60 million Americans to file claims for unemployment benefits. After seeing how well that first round of lockdowns worked, one of the scientists that will be telling Joe Biden what to do about this pandemic wants to do it again. Yes, you read that correctly. During an interview with Yahoo Finance, Dr. Michael Osterholm said that what we really need to do to get this pandemic under control is to lock the entire country down for four to six weeks. Shutting down businesses and paying people for lost wages for four to six weeks could help keep the pandemic in check and get the economy on track until a vaccine is approved and distributed, said Dr. Michael Osterholm, a advisor to President-elect Joe Biden. And Osterholm isn't talking about doing soft lockdowns, like we saw in many states earlier this year. In an article that he co-authored in the New York Times, he argued that lockdowns need to be as comprehensive and strict as possible. The problem with the March to May lockdown was that it was not uniformly stringent across the country. For example, Minnesota deemed 78% of its workers essential, they wrote in the New York Times. To be effective, the lockdown has to be as comprehensive and strict as possible. Basically, Osterholm wants Australia-style lockdowns all over the United States for at least a month and probably longer. Doesn't that sound fun? On election day, the American people had a choice between a pro-lockdown presidential candidate and an anti-lockdown presidential candidate, and approximately 80 million of us voted for the pro-lockdown guy. So it looks like that is precisely what we are going to get. During the campaign, Joe Biden pledged to follow the science, and Osterholm is going to be one of the scientists that will be on his pandemic advisory board. Osterholm was appointed to Biden's 12-member pandemic advisory board on Monday. The panel of advisors is co-chaired by former Surgeon General Vivek Murthy, former Food and Drug Administration Commissioner David Kessler and Dr. Marcella Nunez-Smith of Yale University. Other task force members include Dr. Atul Gawande, a professor of surgery and health policy at Harvard, and Dr. Rick Bright, the vaccine expert and whistleblower who resigned his post with the Trump administration last month. The good news is that these psychos will not be running things until early January at the earliest. The bad news is that governors around the country are already instituting a new round of lockdowns. For example, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced new restrictions for New York on Wednesday. Governor Andrew Cuomo announced new lockdown and social distancing restrictions for New York on Wednesday as pandemic numbers in the state continue to trend upward. Under the new statewide restrictions, all bars and restaurants with state liquor licenses as well as gyms must close at 10 p.m., starting on Friday. Cuomo called such locations, main spreaders, of the pandemic. Indoor gatherings at private residences across the state must also be capped at 10 people. And Ohio Governor Mike DeWine is saying that his state may soon impose new restrictions on bars, restaurants and fitness centers. As pandemic cases continue to skyrocket in Ohio, Governor Mike DeWine threatened to order bars, restaurants and fitness centers closed in one week if newly confirmed cases continue to increase. Of course this is just the beginning. If the number of daily cases continues to soar, we could start seeing draconian lockdowns all over America even before we get to Inauguration Day.
In other words, get ready to spend a lot of time at home this holiday season, because you might not have any other choice. To me, it is unthinkable that anyone would even want to consider locking down the country again. The first wave of lockdowns absolutely crippled our economy and caused a record-setting tsunami of job losses that we still have not recovered from. In fact, John Williams of Shadowstats.com says that if honest numbers were being used the current rate of unemployment in the United States would be 26.3%. Apparently that is not enough. So what are we going to shoot for this time? 30%? 40%? And what happens if we lock down the entire country for six weeks and then another massive wave of the pandemic comes along just six months later? Are we going to keep locking down the US over and over again? At this moment, our economy is on exceedingly shaky ground and more layoffs are being announced on a daily basis. For example, Exxon has announced that they will be laying off 14,000 workers and Disney has announced that they will be laying off thousands more workers in addition to the huge wave of layoffs that they announced earlier this year. Overall, more than 60 million Americans have already been forced to file for unemployment during this pandemic, and every single one of those individuals has a story to tell. Now sickos like Osterholm want to destroy even more lives, and if Joe Biden ends up in the White House they will almost certainly get their way. We are already in the midst of a horrifying economic depression, and a new wave of lockdowns would make things far worse. These are such troubled times, and many believe that the difficulties that we have experienced in 2020 are just a warm-up act for what is coming in 2021. I do remember the joke of two weeks to flatten the curve, so the medical facilities would not be overwhelmed, Joke is on all of us and too many do not get it. Joke is on the tens of millions that lost their jobs, careers, savings etc etc. God-given unalienable rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. It is sickening seeing children brainwashed to believe that their country works a certain way when it hasn't worked that way in a very long time. These lockdowns have been unprecedented in the history of humankind. During the Spanish flu, the US, lockdown, lasted a maximum of two months. And that lockdown never included work from home or the cancellation of sports. The people who instigated lockdowns should be prosecuted. Their plan is to destroy the economy and the country. This will take a little time but in the end the dollar becomes a relic as the reserve currency status is destroyed and the Chinese Yuan is given that role. The lockdowns will kill far more people than the virus itself especially when you consider all the economic devastation we've seen around the globe because of the lockdowns. Many more people will starve to death and die from tuberculosis because of lockdowns. The world has gone completely insane and there is little intelligent life on this planet. We have closed a global economy for a string of lies and we all continue to put on muzzles or face diapers that cannot stop any virus and may be harmful. The world no longer trusts each other and for good reasons. Yet trust is important for human societies to operate and to thrive. You cannot even count on your neighbor to do what they say or stop them from doing really stupid things. You cannot trust your doctor because you know their brainwashing has scrubbed their brain from common sense. All this tells me that the great tribulation period spoken of in the scripture is at the door. I'd say within two generations 20 to 40 years, as we approach it the world will be under more and more control of Satan and his minions and his goal has been to take away all human dignity that God gave to mankind as being made in his image. Once the new monetary system is in play, all buying and selling and all movements will be known and scored, similar to the social credit scoring system used in China. We just changed insurance because of job change and they want proof of marriage and proof of children via marriage cert and birth certs. Something is just wrong with all that emo, such as the world we are in. I have a wee bit of envy for those who have the purchasing power to be able to live more remotely and to minimize exposure to all this surveillance. Sad for the people ho could and do not, to each their own. The children and grandchildren will never know life as we once enjoyed. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.